What was it? What was it like uh, working with Kurt Cobain? I mean, he was a huge hero of mine. And I, you know, you know, we were really good friends, and when we tried to create together, it was um, it was difficult. Clash of the Titans. No, it was the opposite. Um, two nice guys finishing last. <laughs> two nice guys finishing last. No, nobody, nobody wanted to be the shot caller. Right. You needed an alpha. Uh, Maybe. Well, he he was a fan of mine. That's how I met him. Okay. So we, had a, we had a mutual friend. He asked me to go to the show to meet his best friend who was a singer and was a fan of mine. And, right. And that's how I met him. But I recognized immediately that there was a huge difference between, you know, his talent and uh, what I had going. And I think you underrate your talent, dude. Well, no, I'm talking like 1988. Yeah. So if you heard the records I made in the 80s, they're uh, <laughs> yeah, they're they're not overrated. Right. Okay. I mean, he was incredibly talented. Not that you aren't, but you know, he was one of the greatest songwriters ever. Yeah, exactly. For sure. And, I mean, I recognized that almost immediately. Yeah. And um, and looking back on it now, when I think about us being in the studio together, I, he was reticent because of his respect for me. Right. But I didn't, I was used to like, you know, taking control of every Screaming Tree session because otherwise it was a shit fest. Mm -hmm. Even though I was the least musically proficient member, you right. know, just like by force of will, I had to like sort of keep the, somebody had to hold the reins. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, there was no need to do that in a situation with Kurt, you know what I mean? Right. And so bo both of us were just like kind of non-engaged interesting yeah but well you know what i think infected a lot of people back then and you know i came i started i, I got signed in the mid 90s so i'm back then too it was uh we were all trying to be we were all cool like but we were all kind of too cool or something or like disengaged maybe was like cool or something this was more like yeah, that wasn't it. No. no. I, I, as soon as it came out of my mouth, I'm like, nah, that's not what it is. No, it wasn't that. It was... Uh, it was two nice guys finishing last. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and then one of them becoming be not so thing. nice and <laughs> finishing first. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, he, 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 always, he always was nice. Did you actually yeah. finish first. write some songs? Yeah, that's cool. Um, no, we didn't, we never. It was like a lead belly thing. Yeah, it was like happen. a cover thing. And then like what? And and it was like SST. He wanted to be on SST, but they didn't get it. How did <sighs> they not? How did they not get it, dude? Come on. I know. Like how do you? Sub pop. Get? Sub pop didn't even fucking get it, dude. How, how, why, what wasn't to get? Just that's, how that's great, what I said. How great the songs were. I'll, I'll never forget like going with Kurt to see him opening for Tad and this band called Blood Circus that was on Sub Pop. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, the trees were already on SST. And so Bruce and John, the guys who owned Sub Pop, were always like, hey, man, you know, like, when are you going to come make records for us? Mm -hmm. And uh, they were like, oh, so you came to see Blood Circus, huh? And I'm like, no. Tad? I'm like, Tad's a nice guy, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to see Nirvana, man. They're like they're the best band that you guys got. In fact, they're one of the best bands I've ever seen. And I remember right. I I never forget the way they looked at each other, like Really? Like what? That's uh, just and wild. Then, and then cut <laughs> cut cut to like six six, maybe eight months later when I'm actually signed to them now as a solo artist and I'm going to meet them for some to talk about artwork or something mm -hmm. and I can hear them inside the warehouse it's after hours argue, or Bruce is raising his voice and he's like god damn it is Nirvana the only fucking band we have that's gonna ever sell any records right I'm like oh you get it now huh Greg Ginn at SST I sent him cassettes twice 
of Nirvana because that's how we got signed to him was by giving him a cassette. Right. So wait, but let's go back to this Kurt Cobain thing. Oh, anyway, yeah, Greg Ginn just didn't get it. Yeah. You know, I talked to him like three times on the phone and talking to him was really difficult because he would put these huge pauses in every sentence, like unnaturally long pauses was that like a manipulative tactic i don't know what it was because that is like something people do to make you (laughs) pay attention (laughs) to what they're gonna (laughs) (laughs) say next (laughs) you got me you know i've heard of that shit (laughs) anyway um (laughs) yeah i don't know what it was but he, he wasn't buying those guys that's interesting, and and luckily for them, he didn't, because yeah, as it turned out, you know, Bruce and John were. It all worked out the way it was supposed to. Exactly which is interesting.